Hi everyone, welcome to Run Queensland Sunday Run Day. I'm Brett Standring and I've just been out on a run with my friend Phil Fowler. We've been out this morning out around the glass house having a good old time and I'm here today with Tawana Woodward from Physio Noosa. A lot of you guys might know her from the Black Hole 100 uh, or Ultra Trail Australia. Just to give you a little bit of my research on Tawana before we bring her in and she can correct me if I'm wrong. She's a 10 times starter at Ultra Trail Australia with eight finishes, still chasing an elusive silver buckle. This is yes. a story in itself. <laughs> and she's a three times Black Hole 100 finisher with uh, three top 10 finishes with her, well, equal best last year in 2019, a fifth place. Um, and she's one of our Noosa Nutter legends that work on around and in Checkpoint 5. So she's one of those people you'll see generally later at night, but when you're feeling it, you're up, or she's there to help. So um, welcome to Sunday Run Day, Talena. Thank you very much for having me. It's all, it's a great, great uh, thing you've got going with the Sunday Run Day. Thanks for Simon for setting the standards. So we'll see how we follow in his footsteps. So thanks well, for having me. Well, no worries. Look, I think one of the things I was really wanting to talk to you about is when I started to research how many events you've done, I thought, wow, you've been around this sport for such a long time. Would you like to just sort of let us know how you got into it? I mean, you've been a physio, uh, physiotherapist and physiologist for over 22 years. So it'd be interesting for everyone to hear how you got into ultra running. So I think for me, running has always been part of my life. It's something that I've always done right through from primary school or through high school. Obviously, no ultra distances then. Um, mainly road running, progressed through that in my 20s. And with all the study that I did um, with those couple of degrees that put things on a bit of a back burner. So once I finished studying, I then started getting back into running a little bit more so than just for stress relief after after lengthy periods of study. So um, I started to make a bit of a transition into trail because I was doing a lot of um, endurance horse racing. So we would um, compete with horses anywhere up to 100 mile events for me. I didn't go any further than that, even though there are events available. So, you know, I had many, many years competing with the horses and there was a lot of running involved with that. So that the similar philosophies within endurance horse events carry over to endurance trail events. And it's such an amazing community and there's a lot of similarities between the two, which is so vastly different to road running mm -hmm. and triathlon. Sorry for those that enjoy that sport. Um, but I guess that's probably what attracted me more to, to trail and then long distance trail because I had that as, as a bit of a background with doing that with the horses. Um, and then it was just one day I happened to um, come across a story of a lady who started out doing a lot of um, running or, you know, run hiking and progressing up, up through into longer distances, mostly just to kind of lose weight. And she entered the very first year of the North Face 100, it was called back then. Um, I happened to see the article written about her, thought she was just really quite inspiring and decided to jump in feet first. So that's how I came across uh, the North Face 100, which is now UTA. So I had no clue at all about the training, what was involved, there were no resources then you tried to use a little bit of my scientific background with my training, um, my university training to kind of apply to long distance and trail um, and the ultra side of things and jumped in feet first. And that first year was a massive learning curve. So <laughs> I was totally clueless. And um, thinking back on it now, it was... Um, it was a massive undertaking. I had two very young children. Um, my husband was just carting them around to each and every checkpoint throughout the Blue Mountains. It was, it was, um, yeah, I guess probably the start of what become, has become a very, very big part of our lives. So mm -hmm. um, I didn't finish in that first year. I made a lot of mistakes in that first year. Um, that year was when a, the event was done in reverse 
and I ended up at the bottom of Jamison Valley. It was freezing cold, ice on the ground, decided in all my naive wisdom that I would jump one of the creeks because there were no stepping stones back then and it was ice and nearly frozen over. And as I've landed, I've slipped and fallen and, and blew out a calf muscle. So I'm at the bottom of the Jamison Valley. It's about 80 odd k's in and I've got a leg that doesn't work and I'm pretty much entirely by myself and I hiked up out of the Jamison Valley backwards it was that's 10, and that's 10 k's yeah or yeah or pretty close to yeah it would have been three hours at least of hard going backwards up that hill. Mm. So I made it to 89 Ks on one leg and decided that it was pretty silly to continue the rest and, and I wasn't in a very good way. And so yeah, a lot of learning curves after that year and uh, then came back and um, turned up and I've, yeah, I've, I've started 10, uh, UTAs yeah. consecutive UTAs. Yeah. So I had another year that I went in injured with a bad hamstring, decided that I would just start and see how it went, made a decision with my husband that I wouldn't push into areas where I couldn't get myself out of. Yeah. So I ended up withdrawing at the um, the top of the bottom end of narrow neck that year. Yeah. So that, that so was then, fairly early on that one with a hammy. It, yeah, it was. And then, you know, lots of friends competing. So we just ended up going around and crewing at each of the checkpoints well into the, the very early hours of that yeah. year. So, yeah, so that has been my my UTA um, adventure. So it's been a very big part of my family's life for, for yeah, the better part of the decade. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, then, yeah and, then, and then now we're sort of... Got you running all around the Black Hole. I, I think I might have met you, yeah. if I recall, up at Mapleton. I think yeah. I think you may have been there. Definitely the Noosa Nutters. We need to probably touch on that too, who they are and what they do. Um, yeah. At a cafe up at Mapleton, which is right near the start of the event, and I think you guys might have been running around the Corelpa section and run through a cow paddock. Now, I'm not sure if you were there that day. I can't really remember, but I remember all the Nutters shirts saying, we we're in a cow paddock and I don't know where we were and I don't remember sort of saying, don't worry, we're going to have flagging tape and crosses and arrows there. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, that would have been, I wasn't there that day, I don't think, but I do remember the stories from the nutters out of that, that little yeah. adventure. So, yeah, they're running um, with the cows. Yeah, I think I'd have eaten some time after that though. Yeah. So, yeah, and again, you know, like the, your, your event is, is, you know, has fast become a very big part of our lives here. Um, not just me personally, but the nutters as well. So as you say, you know, I've done, I've done three um, out of, yeah, three out of the five the six, years. Six, three out three of the six. Three out of the six. And then the other years we've run the checkpoint. So yeah. every year we've been involved in one way or another with your event. And it's, um, we just love it. You know, it's, it's a great atmosphere. The people are amazing. I think, what you see at ground level with how people look after each other and, and the respect for each other actually filters down from the top. So you and your team, Brett, have have set the standard very high, I think, and, and um, you have a lot of really a lot of respect and, and admiration amongst everyone out there in in the ultra running world. So congratulations. Oh, that's, really, you. that's really that's really kind to say thank you. I think that with that event though, I, I I kind of see that our team gets this race, we spend the 12 months doing it and getting it ready and then this whole community of people just come in and embrace it and we just have a great weekend. So we're looking forward to that again, which is another, I have, I'll have. i talk to our team about some questions and one of them was, is CP5 the best in the world? <laughs> you know what my answer is going to be and absolutely <laughs> it is the best tech point ever. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really funny. I, it's I, I, a pot with uh, look, and the boys, isn't it? Yeah, look, <laughs> and um, we'll probably get to chat to those guys too. And I think it's really been a fun kind of banter to watch all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But it, 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 they, they are really special, the checkpoints. You can kind of, yeah. there's a real caring feel in them. And we get that feedback every year about it. So it is, it's spectacular how that all works. So, yeah. Um, 
you know, and not just between the rivalry we have about the best checkpoint ever between checkpoint four and checkpoint five, but it is, it's the work that everyone puts in on, on each and, and every aspect of the event, not just, you know, just the checkpoints. It's, it's, it's um, infiltrated throughout. So I think it's, it's um, a wonderful contribution from many, many different people who all come together for what you say is, it is a great weekend. So, oh, yeah. Um, because we've got yeah, the, we've got those individuals that come, but you kind of got like you know the main groups are you know girls run this town and their Friday night sign and everyone in just getting hammered all Friday night yeah. and then they work around CP one in the morning and half them walk back and you know yeah. with the sweepers and stuff and then over to Sunco Runco and you know and then you know Brisbane Trail Runners at four and you guys at five so yeah it's yeah. pretty special how we've been lucky enough to get all you know local groups in and around so. Hopefully we'll have a big time, a big lot of fun this year again and, you know, get into it. So, so I thought you being a physio, one of the other things that would be really cool is, because I know injuries are a part of it, of the event and you put me back together a couple of times. I think you were, you were basically messaging, messaging me through on how to get through Western States. I mean, I really was badly injured and um, yeah. I'm there banging on about operations to you and this and that. You say, no, no. And anyway, I think even the day before, I'm pretty sure it was the day before when I was in yeah. the US, I got a message from you. And to go into that event and feel confident to finish it, it was a battle to do it. I mean, it was a struggle, but having the confidence in, you know, yeah. what you knew and were able to instill in me, I had enough confidence to go and do this event. Not the way I would have liked to have done it, but you know, at the end of the day, I got to do it and it was just amazing. So, so one of the questions I was hoping that you could shed some light on, what are, what are the most common injuries? If you've probably got one, a cut two or three that you could mention um, yeah. and, and why you think they may happen or why they do happen. Look, I think in terms of injuries that you see from trial running or, or, you know, running, if we're keeping it in within the ultra running field, it is going to be without a doubt lower limb issues. And that's going to be at each and every joint. But what I tend to see a fair bit of are the tendinopathies. So not just the acute phase of injuries, which we, we certainly do treat a lot of, it's then the progression of those acute injuries into something that's um, a little bit more longer term. So tendinopathies do rate up there as, as one of the, the higher um, rates of injuries that I tend to treat. Um, I have a specialty in men's and women's health, so I tend to look after a lot of pelvic related disorders as well. So I tend to get a little bit more of the complex things through and, and your injury happened to fall within that complex range of things too. But it's it's applying the evidence-based practice, the things that we know through research, putting them into play within the clinical side of things and structuring um, treatment and return to sport, return to training. Mm. And I know from my own personal perspective in, in treating my, well, not just me treating my own injuries, but having my injuries treated is that if a practitioner said to me, no more running ever, that just would not work. Or even no more running for the next foreseeable future, that wouldn't work. Yeah. So I think what I tend to apply is knowing that that's how I tend to be, is with my patients looking at things that they can do. And absolutely, there is always something that they can keep doing that will work with their fitness and start to at least keep things ticking over, if not improving their fitness, whilst they rehab um, a particular injury. So. I think there's, there is a fair bit of psychology involved with that, um, but it's also applying what we know from the evidence and the research. Um, there is still a science to that, but there's also an art to it as well. So it's got to be very individually based. You've got to flex quite a bit with um, how the person's responding, what they're able to do, what they're not able to do, and to progressively bring them along. And a lot of principles that I use 
um, it's not just in the field of physio, it's also physiology and also the training principles as well. So the coaching side of things too and structuring things so that people can actually keep ticking over and keep working towards a goal, even if that's even if that's modified. And like you said, with Western states is, you know, that's an investment race. Like you put a lot, you put a lot of everything in your life to get there not just health and fitness and training and time it's it's money it's family there's there's so much that goes into an investment race like that mm. so sometimes when you're presented with a fairly complex and quite nasty injury like you were um, taking a step back thinking about needs to be able to, um, to walk as being able to stand on that starting line in the best way possible. Um, and giving, like you said, and giving you the confidence that that might not be your best race ever, but it is a race that you can do. Yeah, I, that's what I mean. I only had about three months to get ready for that. And I was thinking... Mm -hmm. There's no way this is going to happen. And I remember you talking about being able to do this and hiking and letting pain be your guide and all that. And in my mind, I was thinking I was done. And you're right too. You do invest a lot of time, especially every, I think it's every second Saturday in, Dece uh, the second Saturday in December when you're up at 2 o'clock in the morning watching if your name gets drawn out of a barrel for five yeah. years. So, <laughs> so no, it, it is. And I, I think, um, you know, you for me, the guidance that I was getting from you was the biggest, probably the biggest thing was that because it was I had no confidence left in how I was going to get there and that's the thing just with the progression and I didn't lose any fitness I just had to adjust how I approached the event and it was you know if I, if I had my little committee going on in my head oh wow it was shocking I'm glad you intervened otherwise I was in all sorts so yeah it, it was really I was really I guess not lucky I'm, I'm glad that you were there to help that because I wouldn't have probably happen because I know, and you the other thing that I've had I've had a bad knee before and I had a bloke um a doctor say to me you're too old you need to stop running and I thought all oh, right I was only 40 so that's like nearly uh eight years ago and I've done you know a couple hundred mile races and things like that since so you know you're dead right it's for me it's kind of like trying to find people that can work with my psychology and who I am as a person and yeah, it's I think so you're important. a unique subset of people, um, and <laughs> everyone who does. <laughs> unique, <laughs> who unique. Does I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who does these kinds of distances just knows, you know, knows what they have to kind of, you know, commit to, and what they have to put in 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 place in order to get to the start line of 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 these events. So. Um, yeah. I think, you know, I always try and source my own care providers from people who are sports people as well, so other therapists who know in some way, shape or form the demands of the sport. So, yeah. I mean, sometimes, yeah, there does have to be a pretty firm line in the sand about, no, you cannot do any more. Yeah. Um, you need to give this a rest. Uh, but then there has to be a relaxation of that and a progression back into doing something. And like you said, let pain be your guide. There's a lot of a lot of um, psychology around around that as well. So yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what I try and um, employ across the board. Not just whether that's with sports people, but that could also be the little old lady who's rehabbing from a hip replacement. So. Yeah, the same kind of principles can be applied to many different things. So Yeah, cool. Okay, so have you got any events coming up this year that I mean a lot of them have been cancelled, so but have you got anything yeah. on the sort of horizon? Um, not at this point in time. It's been a little bit difficult to plan. The only event for me will be um checkpoint five, of course, in October. Yeah. Um so and again that's um you know, there's obviously a little bit of planning that goes into that commitment to that um, checkpoint for, for you guys. So mm. I work things around um, being available for that weekend, as do a lot of the others. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So in terms of running, though, I'll just wait and see what happens with all of these COVID restrictions in terms of travel interstate or or within our state to see what um, 
see what I might be be looking at. But no, everything's been pushed out to next year at this stage. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I did have a bit of fun with the uh, with the Hocker ISO Run Fest a couple of weekends ago. So that was. Uh, that was my UTA replacement, so that was a little bit of fun <laughs> for that weekend. Um, a lot of solo running, or, or with my dog, who's um, sitting beside me at the moment. So, did you want um, to explain yeah, a little bit so, about that for anyone that doesn't know what it is? Yeah, so Hoka Hoka put on um, an ISO Run Fest nearly two weekends ago, and you could enter. One event, you could enter all events, you could enter solo, you could enter as a team or a family. So essentially what they did is at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning that you did a 5K, 10 o'clock you did a 10K, 2 o'clock on the Saturday you did a 21K, and then on the Sunday you did a 64K. Um, there was also an option of a 42 on the Sunday as well. So um, they had... Facebook Live, where you just logged in 15 minutes before your race started. And on the Saturday 5K, they had uh, David King, who is one of the Indigenous men yep. from the Blue Mountains. He yep. does the the welcome to the welcoming ceremony, welcome to country ceremony uh, for UTA. So they had yep. him do a welcome to country for the start. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so it was just a bit of fun. You... you just record your time and then you uploaded what you did and um yeah so i did the i did the iso 100 for um over the two days a couple wow. of hours so, <laughs> yeah so that was a bit of fun yeah good <laughs> yeah. So, so you're still running then that's good yeah yeah still running um had a bit of a stack the weekend after so i'm nursing a couple of um nasty leg bruises and a bit of a strain so but yeah getting Getting some reasonable mileage in still. Oh, that's I know a good physio if you need one. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, before, before we go to our final question, I was going to, um, do you want to give a quick plug of your business out there for anyone looking for a, well, fantastic physio? Why not yeah. let, let everyone know how they can find you um, yeah. and all that stuff? Yeah. So, my business is Physio Noosa and I am located at... Uh, Noosa Civic. So I've been in that location now for nearly 14 years. So uh, at the moment, um, I've managed to retain the majority of my staff through um, this COVID epidemic. At the moment, I'm one clinician short because he lives in Brisbane. So we're just limiting him with the travel component of things at the moment. So I hope to have him back on deck a little bit later in the year. So uh, we look after, we all have different specialties. So we look after pretty much anything and everything amongst the team. Um, sometimes there is a bit of co-treatment within the team because there will be certain things that are outside of my specialty um, or specialty of, of the others on the team. But, you know, we have a physio who's worked extensively at high level AFL and cricket. We've got another physio who is... Um, a rehab specialist and he's also a lecturer and key uh, keynote speaker at conferences. We've got a national level sprinter who works for us as our um, massage therapist and strength and conditioning coach. So yeah, we've got a we've got a very um, very close knit team. Um, probably one of the best teams I've I've had in a very long time. So very, I would totally very agree. Special. I would totally yeah. agree. Yeah, it's a, a great team. It's a fantastic yeah. business and. Fantastic team of guys get you back on the track really quick. So I know, I know it's certainly helped me. Um, yeah. So our, so our final question for you is: Other than toilet paper, what's your one go-to out on the trail? You can't do without. Uh, my go-to out on the trail, I can't do without is Body Glide. Body Glide. So we've had lip body gloss glide. last week and Body Glide. Body Glide. You can use you can use Body Glide as lip gloss if you absolutely. <laughs> desperately need to which you know maybe have two separate things i was going to say um, maybe have a tube labeled at least i would yeah, yeah. um i'm a, i'm pretty fond of hand sanitizer as well for the longer ones yes <laughs> yeah. oh yeah 
<laughs> you know, yeah. when you're going many, many hours between checkpoints, um, yeah, you don't want to come into a checkpoint and have monkey hands and then be touching everything. So, yeah, I'm a bit fond of, of a bit of hand sanitizer as well. Although there have been funny stories where people have mistakenly used the small um, hand sanitizer bottles and it's had body wash in it, not oh. sanitizer, and they've gone like that and it's foamed up instead of sanitizer. So yeah, yeah, not a good, not good. So yeah, my one go to is is body glide or any derivative thereof. So if it's actually really, really bad weather though, if it's if it's extremely humid or raining heaps, then I don't think you can go past a good old pot of fast. So <laughs> the better you can get the better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm waiting for someone to go to food. We haven't had any food. Everyone's it's either chafing or chap lips. So yeah, yeah. So I like people who know me out on the trail. Like I have the worst, worst constitution ever when it comes to gut. Like I will, I will retch my way around a hundred k. It is, I, I, it's horrendous, really. So the one thing I cannot eat anything solid without chucking it back up. So the the food side of things, I just can't even go there, um, and I'm totally reliant on on tailwind. That's yeah, wow. been an absolute an absolute game changer for me yeah. with having such a really really sensitive um, sensitive gut. So um, yeah, that's my, well, you know, that's probably been more of a go to than anything else. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Vaseline. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so if you're looking for a fantastic physio, go and see Talena up at there at Physio Noosa. Um, and thanks for joining me on the Sunday Run Day. Well, um, thanks for the invite. It has been it has been great. Yeah. All right. Look and no fear, but a cup of tea in my nutter cup. So. Yes. No, go the nutters. Oh, the nutters. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Elena. Excellent. Thanks, Brett. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye.